Today I bring you news of a report published by the Guttmacher Institute, which is a U.S.-based research and policy organization focused on SRHR, or Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights of All Individuals. Philanthropedia named them as the number one organization in the field of reproductive health, and Charity Navigator, an independent charity watchdog group, has given the Guttmacher Institute its highest rating every year since 2010. The point I'm trying to make is that this place is legit. They do real studies, they generate real data, and they work to make policy that is objectively effective. The news I want to talk about today is about their recent report on women's access to abortion across the world. From the executive summary, the authors say, and I quote, This report provides updated information on the incidence of abortion worldwide, the laws that regulate abortion, and the safety of its provision." It also looks at unintended pregnancy, its relationship to abortion, and the impact that both have on women and couples who increasingly want smaller families and more control over the timing of their births, unquote. The publication begins with a long list of bullet points, each one fleshed out with data and a brief explanation. These statistics are eye-opening because they describe a dynamic global effort that's had unequal results. Some of the data points are typical and well-known, like the fact that 20- to 24-year-old women are the age demographic that has the highest abortion rate, and that rates of abortion in developed countries have been decreasing as time goes on. But other statistics were a little more surprising, like how from 2010 to 2014, developing regions of the world had an abortion rate about a third higher than the abortion rate in developed regions or how the frequency of abortion is not really affected at all by the laws that prohibit it. The report explains that these abortion laws, quote, fall along a continuum from outright prohibition to allowing abortion without restriction as to reason. As of 2017, 42% of women of reproductive age live in the 125 countries where abortion is highly restricted prohibited altogether or allowed only to save a woman's life or protect her health, unquote. They explained that the vast majority of countries with these restrictive laws exist in developing regions, something like 93%, whereas developed countries usually have pretty liberal laws about abortion. However, these more liberal countries are experiencing a divergence, with some of them, like the U.S., trying to add caveats and limitations and generally degrade women's access to abortion, while other countries are removing as many restrictions as possible. Abortion safety is a huge part of the legal conflict over abortion in more restrictive countries. The report says, and I quote, Of all abortions, an estimated 55% are safe, i.e. done using a recommended method, and by an appropriately trained provider. 31% are less safe they meet either method or provider criterion. And 14% are least safe, meets neither criterion. The more restrictive the legal setting, the higher the proportion of abortions that are least safe, ranging from less than 1% in the least restrictive countries to 31% in the most restrictive countries." Unquote. The report goes on to explain how this can actually lead to an annual 6.9 million women suffering medical complications from unsafe abortions, which can potentially be lethal. The conclusions drawn from their research are clear. The Guttmacher Institute says, and I quote, The path towards safer abortion is clear. The benefits of expanding legal grounds for abortion begin to accrue as soon as women no longer have to risk their health by resorting to clandestine abortion. Although legality is the first step towards safer abortion, Legal reform is not enough in itself. It must be accompanied by political will and full implementation of the law so that all women, despite inability to pay or reluctance to face social stigma, can seek out a legal, safe abortion." Unquote. 